Hi guys, welcome to Root Stem, and uh, I suppose it's better late than never. I'm going to be painting the bad guys from Blackstone Fortress. I'm doing a bit of a series, try and keep up, okay? So yes, at the beginning of the video you heard me correctly. I have finally got around to doing my Blackstone Fortress and I'm basically showing you the models that I've already sprayed the, oh, not the camera the Space Marines have not been done yet or well, Chaos Marines, sorry um, I'm going to be doing something special with those so they're just being left off they're going to be part of an Iron Warriors army once I get around to it which will probably in about 2-3 years time will be on 10th edition, it'll be amazing <laughs> so I've got the figures in front of me arrayed together um, we've got the Nurgle, Nerdfall Mega Cult. Um, we've got the Guard, Traitor Guard. I do like them models, even though they are monopause, they are quite cool. I've got the Urghuls. We've got Spindle. And of course, we've got the Rogue Psychers, which I do like the idea of actually, if I'm playing a game against an Imperial Guard person, I might use them Rogue Psychers as Guard Psychers and make it out as if they've corrupted the forces that they're with i do like that idea i am going to be basing these um based on what i'm going to be trying to do my chaos army in because these might be accompaniments to it so even though it's going to look a little bit odd as you can see normally if you've ever watched any of my videos i've normally put a lot of basing material on i haven't in these and as you can see they're all sprayed up a little different um these have all been sprayed up with chaos black and these have both been sprayed with Mechanica Standard Grey to start with. And then I have done like a Xenophil highlight using Grey Seer. Now, I've actually done this one more heavily than this one because I want this one to be like a darker grey, whereas this one's going to be a lighter greyish colour. We're going to be doing all sorts with these. These two are going to be really, really quick. So in today's video, put all the rest aside, I'm basically going to be showing you how to do the spindle drones and the Urgles, because they're going to be done with a lot of washers, shades and some contrast paint. It's going to be a hell of a lot quicker than what I'm going to be able to do with these guys. So, let's get rid of the others and let's focus on these chaps. Right then guys, what we're going to do to start with on these figures, we are actually going to give them a dry brush. And I'm going to be using a pure pot of Gracia for this. I'm going to use the Gracia spray. I'm also going to be using a dry brush of Gracia and this is... I'm going to be doing it a little bit heavy on there. And basically this is so that we can get... Is that the same? Colour? Oh yeah. So we can just get a little bit of those edges and tops highlighted before we even start putting. And it just corrects what we've done. As you can see, you've sprayed on the film. It just corrects what we've done previously. Now, I am wanting to put a bit on these fellas but it's very very light i'm wanting on there i'm not wanting hardly any at all and that's just going to be on the top now these are very very delicate they're not the best models if i'm completely honest so i'm going to try and be very careful and i'm just sweeping backwards and forwards across the top ridge so all i'm doing like i say i'm just doing the tops it's just going to basically pick up little bits you can see from the chest it just picks out the chest a little bit more with that dry brush and of course some of the muscles on the back be a bit heavy with them a bit lighter with oars do that let's get into the next stage so to begin with we're going to actually make a wash for the urgles now we've mixed one part quillia green shade one part dragon off night shade and one uh, three parts lime in medium and we're going to slather slather we're going to put this all over the actual figure that's going to give us our kind of bluey turquoise colour. Now while we're waiting for his mix to dry on those guys, we're going to get some Griff Charger Grey and we're going to uh, slap it onto the armour plates 
auf. Once you put on the grey, we're going to get a black Templar and we're going to do the legs. So we're going to dry brush some Ulfuran grey, a little heavy of a dry brush on these guys and a lighter dry brush on these guys. Now, look at that. Just look at the difference that you've got there. That's, that's looking corking. And then, the rest of them in a minute. It's a beer to get. I don't want a lot of this on here at all. So grabbing hold of the actual model. It's going across the top. Just try and make sure it's just the armour. Again, be careful because they are, as their name suggests, spindly. Okay, now we've got this dry brush on. We're going to go two, one part Druki Violet, two parts Lamy and Medium. And we're going to do the hands. So basically what I'm going to do is to pick a point up the forearm and then stroke down. Hopefully that would mean that the pigment is going to be then more towards the end of the hands. You can use your, your finger if you want to try and blur it a little. On there, just try and make sure that you are blurring it all. That is. Like I say, I used one part, two parts Lamy medium, one part droopy violet. I'm not wanting something that's, that's too over the top and ostentatious. I'm wanting something that's a little bit different and then hopefully by you doing stroking down like that in that motion that will leave the thinner bit of this particular wash at the top of your figure while waiting for the purple to dry we crack open the dragon rock nightshade and we basically ink the legs so with that dry brush we should now get like a bluey black While we're still waiting for stuff to dry, I'm going to use one and a half parts Lamy Medium with uh, one part Caribou Crimson. And we're just going to put, I've got a smaller brush, I'm just going to put that into the mouth. Across the eyes. And give that onto the lower part. As you can see, there's a subtle shade of purple. We'll do that for all of the mouths. So hopefully now we've got a figure that's kind of looking like this. Should be with our hand since I am left handed. A figure that's looking like that. And they're pretty much done. We just need to now do the eye lasers on these guys. Now, sometimes I will probably get the airbrush out, but I'm wanting to do this quick and these are too too fiddly. So we're just gonna get a mix of Lothian blue and white scar. Uh, I've got my smaller dry brush and I'm just gonna kind of dry brush around the eye section. I'm gonna do that on all of them. And then what I'm gonna do is then use something I don't think Workshop makes anymore for some reason. So what I'm using next is Gulliman Glaze. Now I've been told that Games Workshop don't make it anymore. I haven't really been able to check, to be honest. Um, but because I used to use it for my Crimson Fist, I've got loads of it. Um, now, 
if you haven't got access to Glumman glaze, you can always make your own glaze by just getting like a, a deep blue, uh, like an, uh, I want to call it Enchanted, but it isn't now. Hang on. It's called Calador Sky. You could, my arms are way. You could possibly use that uh, and just thin it down to dry and make your own glaze. Or I've been told if you uh, have Talisar Blue and you put a little bit of Technical Contrast Medium in there, that will actually create something similar. And I'm just going to get a small brush and I'm just going to put it on the eye. And that's going to give us a... Uh, We'll just fill out the details at the back. It'll give us a blue glowing eye, and we've already done a very quick objective light source. Now, as I've said, I'm not really going to be doing these bases for Blackstone Fortress. These are going to—I'm uh, doing them all so it matches with my Chaos Army. Uh, I'm probably going to be using them for scenarios and such. So they're going to be done up um, for my Chaos. Not sure how I'm going to be using them, but when you're playing narrative games, it does. It kind of comes in and makes sense sometimes. You can use them as stand-ins for stuff. Uh, right, so whatever type of base you want to do, go ahead and do it. And there we go. Woohoo! Little man. Ready for Blackstone Fortress. Yeah, I've done like a, uh, a snowy, well... A very quick simple bases it's the idea is that's why i've gone and actually i wasn't going to base these but i've got them base them it's going to be more of a mud uh, style with some snow and uh you can see i've tried to make it look like some of the snow melting well i'm not showing you how to do the bases these are basically just so we can get those particular figures all done up next up is going to be the guardsmen and now i'm going to be painting them when we get round to it they're going to be painted in a more traditional blood pact sort of way uh, mainly because it sticks in my mind from reading the Dan Abnett's Gaunt's, Gaunt's Ghosts novels which I really really enjoyed um, I still enjoy actually uh, so going back and me reading some of those novels and the blood pact stick out in my mind as some of the most nefarious enemies that they had to come across also a bit more of a regimented army for the chaos forces rather than something that just randomly turns up um, I want it to be a bit more, a bit more uniform. So prim <laughs> primarily, they're just going to be red. But that's going to be next time round. So stay tuned for that, guys. Uh, thanks very much for watching. Please like, share, subscribe, hit the notification button for more. Uh, and of course, stay tuned. Hopefully for next week uh, for the blood pack figures being painted. And um, we'll see you next time.